Now, I'm sure you've, you know, you, you started holding this, this thing that you planned of what you were going to do, how you were going to relax and enjoy yourself. And the first thing you hit are cues, cues on the road, cues at the airport. I'm, I suspect there's not so many cues at the airport today. But, you know, and, and then you cue and, and you get to the place where you, you're, you're going to spend your time, only to find that the accommodation you chose wasn't quite as it explained in the brochure. Um, but you get there anyway, and you find that you know, you've got nowhere to park your car. And then you find out that there's a financial cost to all this. You thought you'd paid for the holiday up front, but when you get there, you realise you've got to start paying for parking, food is extra, any attraction you want to go on, there's a cost for that. And, and so it goes on. And in the end, you, know, you come back off your holiday thinking, wow, I need a holiday to get over that. <laughs> it wasn't quite what I intended. But really, should holidays be that way? Like most things in life, we take hold of the promise of a holiday, but we fail to live up to the terms and conditions behind that holiday. I'm sure we do that in our Christian lives as well, don't we? No, we hold on to the Bible promise of forgiveness of prosperity, of eternal life. We get hold of the promise, but we fail to live up to the terms and conditions that apply to those things. And so it is you know, with God's holy days. God decreed a number of days. One of them was the Sabbath day, God's holy day of rest. And then he went on for the Jewish nation to describe seven other feasts. Now, they've been covered, and because of time, I'm not going to go into them at this moment in time. But in Leviticus chapter 23, you'll read of six other feasts that go on. And there's a seventh one, actually, that's mentioned in the book of Esther. And these were all times that, for the Jewish people, would be taken as their holidays. And as you go through these different holy days, you'll notice that there's a number of things that they all have in common. First, they entailed a complete break from the normal life. In other words, you don't carry work with you. It's a separate day. The second thing that you read is that they were communal events. In other words, you enjoyed them with other people from your tribe. And thirdly, there was a lot of detail that you had to pay attention to. And you think, hold on a minute, holidays, detail, I don't want that. You see, God was very concerned that people treated their holidays in the right manner. Let's give you an example. If you turn to Leviticus chapter 23, and this is one that um, Bruna covered last week, we're going to do the Feast of First Fruits or the Feast of Harvest. Let's have a look at the detail of how God instructed people to conduct this holy day. On verse 12, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 12, it says this. On the day when you present the bundle of grain, offer a male lamb, one year old, that has nothing wrong with it, as a burnt offering to the Lord. You must also offer a grain offering, four quarts of fine flour mixed with olive oil as an offering made by fire to the Lord. To smell will, its smell will be pleasing to him. You must also offer a quart of wine as a drink offering. Until the day you bring your offering to your God, do not eat any new grain, roasted grain, or bread made from new grain. I don't know about you, but holidays, I like to empty my mind. But there's a lot of preparation that goes on. By the way, there are preparation actually for real holidays as well. But you see, the thing is with God's holy days is that there were dire consequences if you didn't follow the instructions. Let's go on to verse 29 of Leviticus 23. And this is actually about the Feast of the Day of Atonement. And this is what God said here. Anyone who refuses to give up food on this day must be cut off from the people. If anyone works on this day, I will destroy that person from among the people. Wow. That sounds really severe. That sounds anything like a holiday. 
So why didn't God just say, do you know what, just take the day off. Just take the week off. Do anything you like. Why didn't God say that? Why did he go into all that detail and there being consequences if you didn't go into the detail? Well, to answer that question, you first of all have to understand the nature of God and the nature of mankind. You see, God loves us. Do we agree with that? God loves us more and he, he's desperate to us to enter into that close relationship with him. But the trouble is, we as people have got two traits that work against that. The first one is this. We're likely or we're prone to ignore God's rules or just downplay them a little. No, mustn't steal, but it's okay if I take that pen from work. Um, okay, I know I'm contracted to work 40 hours a week, but it's okay if I do 37 this week, isn't it? It's not really stealing, is it? And the same thing also applies, you know, when God's rules. We sort of down, it doesn't really matter, does it? And secondly, is that we're so quick to forget about God's goodness. God, our Heavenly Father, sent Jesus, his only son, to die for us. And how often do we go, yeah, okay, yeah, he died for us, great. I can go to heaven now. Without realising what did that mean? And you see, without remembrance, we're just likely to say, yeah, fine, he's done that, tick, it's on that box. And we dismiss it lightly. And the result is, we end up being separated from God and from his heart. And as a consequence of being separated, we forget that we're only here on this planet for a short time. And what we do, the consequences of our action, impacts not just our own lives, but those of our family, of the people we meet for eternity. Holy days were instigated by God to stop this happening. <laughs> so that we could be focused on what is true and real and what benefits us for eternity. However, for a holy day to be effective, it's got to be approached with the right attitude. It's the reason why on all the holy days, God mentioned, don't do your normal work. Leave it behind. I don't know, how many of you have actually invited a friend round to your house? You know, you want to spend some time with them, and then they spend all their time on their phone. Oh, excuse me a minute, I've just got to answer this. I've just got to do this bit of work, and then I'll spend another minute with you, and then I go, how do you feel when that happens? Do you feel like you're important, or do you feel you're being used? It's the reason why God put down so much of that preparation is to get us into the right frame of mind. You see, while they were getting ready for the sacrifices, while they were getting with the meals, and the, what they're thinking about what they are doing to please God. And it means that you start to forget that other stuff in life. That's the reason why the detail's there. And then as we come to those holy days, all these holy days had three purposes. The first purpose was one of sacrifice. To ask for forgiveness. To go to a holy God and say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. The second purpose was so that they could remember God's goodness. To remember that he got me out of this situation once before. He did provide me for all my life. If he did it then, he's a loving God, he'll do it again. So it builds up faith within us. And the third reason, the third purpose, was that God wanted this to be a witness to the nations around. That these people were different. That they respected the Lord their God. That God was real to them and was blessing them. We read in the New Testament that Jesus and his disciples 
actually kept to the feasts and to the holy days. So the question is, why don't we today do the same things? Why don't we have all those other festivals? What happened between Jesus and us here now? If God's word is true, then surely those festivals are still true. I'd like to turn to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16. And this is a verse that Bruna read out last week. Colossians 2 and verse 16. It says this. So do not let anyone make rules for you about eating and drinking or about a religious feast, a new moon festival or a Sabbath day. These things were like a shadow of what was to come. But what is true and real has come and is found in Christ. You see, the feasts and the festivals of the Old Testament were a shadow of what was to come. When Jesus died on the cross, the purpose of sacrifice was done away with. We no longer had to give sacrifices. In Hebrews 10 and verse 8, or rather, Hebrews 10 and verse 11, it says this. Every day the priests stand and do their religious service, offering, often offering the same sacrifices. These sacrifices can never take away sins. But after Christ offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he sat down at the right side of God. And now Christ waits there for his enemies to be put under his power. With one sacrifice, Jesus made perfect forever those who are being made holy. So you see, in this day and age that we live in, the purpose of sacrifice has been done away with. Jesus has dealt with it. But what's interesting is that the purpose of remembrance still stands. The purpose of witness still stands. They weren't done away with. In Luke 22, you might remember, Luke 22, when Jesus was instigating what we call the Lord's Supper, or the breaking of bread, what did he say? I think the verse is going to come up on the screen for you. It says, Luke 22, verse 19, Then Jesus took some bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to the apostles, saying, This is my body which I'm giving to, to you. Do this to remember me. You think, well, hold on, Jesus is about to die. How, we will never forget that, surely. But you know, we do so easily. And that's the reason why we do those services, is to remember God. Why? Because God wants us to put us back into that place. Not to be conformed with the world and what the world thinks important, but to be put place in that relationship back with God. If someone has given their life or done some great thing for you, your relationship with them is close, isn't it? And you have to keep reminding yourself, what did that person do for me? Hebrews 10 and verse 25. You should not stay away from church meetings, as some are doing, but you should meet together and encourage each other. Do this even more as you see the day coming. So you see, this getting together, this remembrance, is just as important as it was. And it's interesting is that the Old Testament sacrifices, you see, there's actually almost a one-for-one one on them. If we go back to the Old Testament, uh, Jesus talked about the Sabbath day, about a, a holy day. Well, of course, that's what we celebrate today on a Sunday. It's still the same. It's a holy day. It's a day, hopefully, that we set aside for him. If we look back to the Old Testament Leviticus, there was the feast of the Passover and the unleavened bread. This is where the children of Israel were delivered by the angel. And of course, our equivalent is Good Friday. It's when Jesus died on the cross. And then, of course, we have the Day of Atonement in the Old Testament, where the priest prayed over the people and they were forgiven. For us, that is our Easter. When Jesus rose from the dead, we rose to life with him, those who believe on him. So the Day of Atonement is really our Easter that we celebrate. Then, of course, we have 
first fruits, harvest, something that's, that's celebrated in some churches, but you know, we should always celebrate each year. I, I don't know, each day we say that prayer, don't we? The Lord's Prayer, Lord, give us today our daily bread. And the thing is, because we know it's in the cupboard, it's easy to say, yeah, yeah, just... But, you know, when I pray in the mornings, I really say, Lord, thank you for my food. Thank you so much for my food. Because it gives honour to the one who provides. The Festival of Weeks that we celebrate now as the day of Pentecost. It's when the Holy Spirit, when God himself comes down and dwells within us. Well, that's something to celebrate, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Wow, if... I think the people in the Old Testament, if they looked ahead and saw what God was about to do, they'd go, I want some of that. Christmas doesn't tend to fit in some ways, but you know, it's a time when we remember that God so loved the world that he gave. It's worth celebrating, isn't it? But God often makes the comment in his word that People often, they keep to the letter of the law, but their hearts are miles away from him. And so it is with us as well, isn't it? We can come and we can celebrate these things, like we can come on a Sunday and celebrate, but often our minds are a hundred miles away. Psalm 106 It's a great psalm, but it recounts the number of times that the children of Israel would come back to God and then they would gradually leave him behind. If like the celebrations became rituals. They became far from God and as a result, sin crept in. They were then defeated by their enemies. They cried out to God and God delivered them. Fantastic. They're all back celebrating the festivals again. And if you look, it repeats itself. A few years later, they'd forgotten that, start building calves and other idols and stuff like that. They get defeated, God delivers them, come back. If only they had kept to what the festival meant anyway, kept that remembrance up front, maybe they wouldn't have gone away. And I wonder if that's true with us as well. I wonder whether God's holy days, Easter, um, Pentecost, Christmas, Good Friday, Sunday. I wonder whether we approach them in the right way. I wonder if we're prepared for them. One of the things I like about Facebook is it it reminds me when it's someone's birthday. And then I can spend 10 seconds, oh, let's send a birthday request to Stephen Odo. And of course, Stephen thinks that I've actually thought about it in the weeks leading up to it, which I have with you. (laughs) Isn't it true? And isn't that how we preach God sometimes on a Sunday? It's a Sunday club. If I don't go, someone will complain, so I might as well go. Is that honouring to our God? No, it's not, is it? Bruna said in that message, I, I wrote this down, I thought it was such a great comment. She said this, familiarity, familiarity, if I can pronounce it, is a killer. We become so familiar with the gathering together, with celebrating Easter, that we've forgotten who it is we actually serve. So often, tradition gets in the way. And it breaks that relationship. These holy days were for, to bring us back into that close relationship with God. I don't know about you, but um, if I'm having a bad day, and then I mentioned Facebook again, by the way, occasionally it pops up with photos of something I was doing four years ago, and it just makes me smile. I think, wow, and it takes me out of stuff. You know, and if we want to be taken out of the hurt that's going in this world, we need to remember just who God is. And that he's just as active today as he was four years ago, ten years ago. He's just the same. His love for us has not diminished in any way. It's the same. And we only come to that if we remember him. And we spend these times. 
I just want to read you one other scripture. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 11, starting at verse 13. Deuteronomy 11, verse 13. And it says this. This is God speaking. If you carefully obey the commands I'm giving you today, and you love the Lord your God, and you serve him with your whole being, then he will send rain on your land at the right time. In the fall and spring, and you'll be able to gather your grain, your new wine and oil. He will put grass in the fields for your cattle, and you will have plenty to eat. Doesn't that sound like a day of rest? Be careful, or you will be fooled, and you will turn away to serve and worship other gods. If you do, the Lord will become angry with you and will shut the heavens so it will not rain. Then the land will not grow crops, and you will soon die in the good land the Lord is giving you. Remember my words with your whole being. Write them down and tie them to your hands as a sign. Tie them to your foreheads to remind you. Teach them well to your children. Talking about them when you sit up at home and you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up, write them on your doors and gates so that both you and your children will live a long time in the land that the Lord has promised your ancestors as long as the skies are above the earth. This scripture tells us that our future prosperity, our happiness depends on us remembering God's commands. And therefore, approaching these holy days, whether it be the Sunday or the other festivals, is so important that we do it in the right way. Remember it. Write it down. Because it affects us in the future. The way in which we approach God and his holy days really matters. Perhaps you're listening to this and you're thinking, well, I not quite get what, he's get what he's talking about there. You see, I'm talking about when we give our lives to God, when we say to God, God, I recognize you as king, then he promises to come in and it changes our outlook. If you've never experienced that, then do get in touch with us you know, at tellus at citypraisecenter.com. Do get in touch and we'll get back a hold of you. But for those of us who love God, Let's remember that God wants us to treat him with respect and with honour. And in so doing, he will place honour and blessings upon us. Let's just pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your holy days. Lord, for what they mean. Lord, for what you did. And Lord, and for what you're going to do. Lord, help us to... Just approach them in that right frame of mind that we, Lord, might give honour to you at all times and that through that, Lord, others round about us will know that you are God and will come to know you as well. Lord, we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.